Again, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Samir. I'm one of the pre-sales engineers at Zoho in our Austin, Texas office. So here's some of the things we're going to be going over today. We'll go over the basics of what a CRM is and why you might need it for your business. Uh, we'll go over how to set it up and build the foundation behind your business in the CRM and then tweak it a little bit so it can be a little bit more specific to what you're looking for, what you're trying to accomplish, and what you need to get done by, at the end of the day. Throughout the entire time, we're going to go into a demo of the product and uh, go over specific steps on how to build the foundation behind it and open it up for questions afterwards. Right. So um, the first question that I want to ask you guys is why you might need a CRM. Uh, I, want, I want you guys to think about it for a second and see why exactly you might need to invest in a software like this or anything like that for your business. A lot of people tell me that they just want to close more deals. They want to make that uh, additional revenue and keep closing more deals and everything. But I want to tell you guys right now that it's so much more than that. It's much more than just closing those deals and building additional revenue. It's a way for you to build long-lasting relationships with your customers. Not only when you in, uh, initially close that first deal with that customer, you can always follow up with them later on, see how they're doing, and maybe even build more revenue, additional revenue. You can also track where you are in your sales process. So if you're trying to hit a certain goal for that current month or maybe that quarter, you're able to see in the software where exactly you are and what you need to do to get there and achieve that goal. Based on that information that you accumulate in the process, you're also able to track uh, your progress and everything like I was saying, and then also see where you can make improvements. By using the reports in the CRM, you're able to see how much you've already uh, achieved and see where your improvements can be made and what, what you can do to you know, hit that goal next year or next month. But I want to even take it a step further. One of the things that a lot of people tell me whenever they're starting a business or even trying to build out their sales process is they run into issues like these. Unorganized data being the biggest one here. If they're using certain softwares, maybe like three different ones that we saw in that one video, maybe you're using Microsoft Excel to um, handle all of your customer data. Maybe you have um, you know, different contact information in all your, your emails, or maybe it's in notes all over your desk. It can get really cumbersome to manage all that information. So by using a CRM, you're able to have everything housed in one specific database to handle all that information, right? By handling everything in just one space, you're reducing a lot of repetition, repetition and time management is pretty much achieved from that. You're not doing the same things over and over again, loading the same data, maybe uh, sending the same emails to customers or, or anything like that. You're saving a lot of time in the process. You're preventing people from making mistakes too. So talk about your sales team for a minute. Maybe they make some typos here and there. They might not follow up with someone in a timely manner. You have different opportunities where you can prevent human errors like that from happening. And at the end of the day, no one ends up dropping the ball. You don't lose sight on that potential revenue or closing that deal that you could have closed beforehand. So whenever you're asking that, uh, whenever you're starting to build out your sales process and use a CRM, there's three different things that you need to ask yourself. It's about process, people, and insight, or data. VJ was talking about this in his previous presentation as well. So let's go into specifics on how these work. Process. How do you want your business to operate? How exactly do you make a revenue right now? Whenever your leads come in, how do you accumulate that data? How does it go from the first initial step to closing out that deal and making that revenue? That's what process is all about. Then people. How does your structure work for your team right now? Do you have salespeople working on, um, working on the sales side and following up with customers? Do you have a marketing team that deals with the leads that come in? Do you have customer support that deals with the customers afterwards? How exactly does that work? How do they communicate with each other? That's what people is all about. And the last thing is going to be insight. So what data are you trying to look at in your CRM? And where exactly do you want to model that information? This is exactly what's going to go on in the insight section. All right. So first off, we're going to go with process. Again, this is where you're going to see and formulate how your business works right now and see how you can model that information into Zoho CRM. So let's just take an example of a car dealership. Let's just say I'm the owner of a car dealership and I sell cars directly to consumers. Whenever someone walks in the door and sees my showcase, that's when the initial step is created, right? The new lead comes in. 
Then I have a sales rep go up to them, say, hey, how are you doing? They grab their name, their contact information, maybe what their budget is, what uh, kind of car they're interested in. That's the initial information that I grab from them, right? What else happens in the process? Let's just say, um, you know, I need to grab some more information from them, maybe their credit history, what else they're bringing to, to, to the table, like a trade-in or something like that. And then I negotiate the price with them after that. And once that happens, I, I give them a price, they accept it, and the deal is closed. That's pretty much the sales process behind you know, selling cars, for example, right? You're gonna take that same model that you're using right now in your specific business and formulate it the same way as I just mentioned for a car dealership into your CRM. Selling cars isn't the same way as selling software, right? It's not gonna be the same as selling accounting services or real estate and so on. It's always gonna be different for each and every one of your businesses. So this is where you can actually adapt the CRM to do that. Let's translate that into CRM terminology. You have three different things that you need to learn and talk about when it comes to formulating all that information into the CRM. You have your modules. These are the different tabs at the top that you might see in your CRM system. Leads, contacts, accounts, potentials, and so on. Reports and dashboards. Within each of those specific uh, tabs, you have the form that you fill out for each of those uh, records. So for leads, first name, last name, company, email address. And then you can also adjust how that information is gonna be organized using the layouts. So let's jump into the software itself and see how that works. So this is pretty much the interface for the software. We'll just zoom in a little bit. And right when you log into your home screen, this is exactly what you're gonna be seeing here. You have your tabs at the top. These are what we call our modules. So let's define them real quick. We have leads. Leads are what we consider in the CRM is uh, you've accumulated their data, their contact information in some form or fashion, maybe through lead generation software. They might have you know, gone to your website and filled out a form. You got their contact information, but you're not really sure that they're interested in what you have to offer. So you have to qualify them. So you follow up with them, you contact them, and once you realize that they're interested, you can actually convert them into a contact and an account. A contact is gonna be the actual person that you're talking to, their first name and last name, and the account is gonna be the company that they represent or who they work for, right? So in a business-to-business -business scenario, you're gonna use the account section to manage company information and the contact section to manage the people that you're talking to specifically. But here's the beauty of the CRM. If you're business-to-consumer or business-to-business, -business, you can formulate the CRM tabs based on what's important to you. So let's just say in that same example, I'm selling directly to consumers, right? I really don't need the accounts tab, so I can remove it by going into the customization menu within the CRM, I'm able to not only just remove any tabs that I don't need, I can change around what the order of them is, I can change the names as well. So maybe I use prospects instead of leads, or customers instead of contacts. I can always change the name of any of these as well. All right, so going into one of these tabs real quick, when I click on the tab uh, for leads in my CRM, I'm able to see a quick list of all the different leads that I have, just in a quick view. Whenever I create a new lead by clicking this new lead button, I'm able to fill out the information. These are where the fields come in for your CRM. So again, I have first name, last name, company, phone, email address as my different fields. But not all of these might be important to me, right? I might not need website or fax number or maybe number of employees. When I click this edit page layout button, I'm able to jump into the layout section of the CRM and adjust what exactly I need for my lead form and uh, build anything else that I might need as well. So maybe I don't need fax number. I can drag and drop it to the list of remove fields so now I don't have to enter that information. It's not even gonna be in my view. I can also make any specific fields mandatory as well. So maybe I want email as a mandatory field. So whenever someone enters a new lead and saves it, they have to enter the email field for that lead to be saved. I can also create custom fields as well. So going along with the same car dealership example, maybe I want to grab the estimated budget of what the customer's looking for. So I jump into currency field, enter estimated budget, and just by doing that, one second. And 
the length is for the specific figures that you're working with. I'll just put nine. I sell really, really expensive cars, by the way. And then um, the decimal places as well. Whenever I actually save that, um, that field, I'm also able to populate it into my accounts, my contacts, and my potential section too. So whenever I go through the conversion process of converting a lead to a contact, I can also populate that information in here too. So let's go ahead and save that. So now it's right over here as one of my new fields. And I can definitely enter that information in. I can fill it out for any of the new leads that I bring into my software. So again, just to recap, we went over the different modules in the CRM, leads, contacts, accounts, and showed you how exactly you can manage all that information within each tab and everything. Okay? We also went over how you can set up that information within the form itself. So again, filling out these different fields, changing where they are in the system, and making specific ones mandatory. So that's pretty much the foundation of how you want to formulate the CRM for your business specifically, what pieces of data that you need that are, infor that are most important to you, and how exactly is it gonna fit and look in your CRM too. So the next topic that we're gonna be going over today is the people. How is your team structured right now? Do you have your sales team that works specifically with contacts and accounts to build potentials? Do you have your marketing team that works on campaigns and manages leads that come into the CRM? How exactly does that work? And what are they responsible for? So bringing that back to CRM terminology, this is how you can exactly set up your organization. We have different roles and profiles in the CRM. A role is gonna be what each user can see in the CRM, so what data that they have access to. And a profile defines their responsibility and what they have access to do exactly. So within that, a certain scenario, you can set up a profile for your sales team since they're only responsible for these few things, and you can set up a different profile for maybe accounting or sale, I mean for marketing or support. You can define what, what specific responsibilities each person has. So let's jump into the software real quick. So going back to my home screen, from here I can click this setup icon at the top right and go into users and permissions. Once I do that, I already have a few uh, specific users already added into the CRM. Um, Matt and Ricky, Tanner and Tages. They all have different specific roles and profiles as well. The profile, it, let's just take for example an admin. He has access to the entire system in the CRM. He can do pretty much anything he wants as well. A standard profile is mostly just someone who um, you know, can enter information, they can manage data, but they can't really do any admin privileges as well. So, you know, restricting them from uh, importing or exporting, for example. You can also create specific profiles too. And we're gonna go over more of how this works in our uh, next presentation over customization. Then you can also create roles. So I have the CEO at the top, I'll just say I'm the CEO, and then I have sales managers under me. So Tejas and Ricky, for example. Then under them, they have, they have sales executives that they manage specifically as well. So in that scenario, the sales executive can only see information that is assigned to him. When, um, when the sales manager logs into the CRM, they can see everything below them. So the, what the sales execs are doing, what they're up to, and so on, and they can also see their own data. And then the CEO has access to all the data in the CRM. So, all of the leads, all of the contacts, all of the accounts. You have that type of scenario to build up a hierarchy in the system as well. We're gonna go over more about how to build these roles, profiles, and groups, and everything like that in some of our next presentations. So now that we've brought in how exactly your system works, what exact data is most necessary to you, and you've also set up the hierarchy in your system and what each person on your team is responsible for, the next step is actually to bring in the data into the CRM. And this is where insight comes in. So what exactly do you wanna see inside your CRM? This is how you can manage your list views, create reports, and actually manage and bring in that data. So let's go into the software itself and see how it works and everything. So let's just say I'm in my lead section here. 
uh, and I want to bring in a new list of leads. I can click this import button right here uh, to upload a specific Excel or maybe a CSV file and bring in that information into the CRM. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys a simple Excel file that I already have. Okay. Um, this is one of our other applications called Zoho Docs. I highly suggest everyone take a look at it. Um, from here, you're actually able to see my, my import of information. I have you know, people like Clark, Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne, and so on. They're new leads in my system. So from here, I can actually go into this section, click Choose File, and import that specific information in here. Go to Downloads. There it is. So one of the things that we were talking about is unorganized data, right? By bringing in an Excel spreadsheet of information, you're preventing that issue from happening. Replicated data, things across the board and everything. This way you're, you're actually able to add in information specifically into the CRM. And if there's any replicated data, maybe you have you know, similar things across the board, there's also a way to deduplicate that information. So you, either you can skip existing records, overwrite them, or create clones if you needed to. So once that import takes place, it's automatically, as you can see here, I have my CRM fields on the left and my import or my uh, Excel columns on the right. So it's actually gonna let me pick which specific columns in my system, like company, first name, last name, and um, map them to a specific CRM field. So I can actually translate in that information accordingly. And once I do that, click next. It's telling me that all my columns are mapped. And now I'm able to see the import status within this section and that it's gonna be um, brought in in just a second. From here, I can go into my lead section and maybe I just wanna take a look at some of my specific leads, maybe the ones that, that just came in today. Instead of going and seeing in all my open leads, I can drill down on a specific one. Maybe I just wanna take a look at leads assigned to me, ones that were recently created, maybe ones from today. I can actually drill down and see that information straight from the CRM as well. <clears throat> and, um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much everything for managing that information in your leads. You can also create specific filters as well. So instead of just going in and seeing the ones from today, for example, you can actually drill down and make specific views as well. And we'll go into specifics in the next presentation. A couple other things that you can uh, do from the CRM, you can also personalize. So jumping in back into the setup section, you can also go into organization settings and define a couple of things behind your company. What the details are, maybe some uh, companies don't operate on January 1st, so you can select the fiscal month. Uh, you can also set up multiple currencies if you're working in different uh, countries as well. Jumping into the personal settings, you can also define your own information too. Maybe what uh, time zone that you're in, what language you're using. Uh, you can also change the theme of the CRM too. So instead of making it black and white, you can you know pretty up the CRM too for everyone. So you have that, uh, that capability within the CRM. Uh, a couple of final things. With, while you're building your setup process and everything in your sales, you also do have our resources for utilizing Zoho CRM as well. You can take a look at our help guide, zoho.com slash CRM slash help. You could, uh, you could start attending some of our live webinars that are hosted every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Time. This is actually a live person that's walking you through the process of setting up the CRM. You can also jump into our demonstration videos on YouTube, go to uh, Zoho University at udemy.com, and also take, uh, reach out to our technical support 24 hours a day, five days a week, either via phone or email. So you have all these resources to you know, help build you in the process of building out your CRM and jump straight into the software and everything.